a pleasure for me to be a presenter today. Um, I hope that the information that I have prepared uh, for you will be useful and to you spend some great time updating our .NET uh, knowledge. Um, so yeah, today's topic, uh, it's .NET MAUI, the newly, freshly released, I think in, uh, by the end, in the end of May, uh, multi-platform app uh, UI. And I will try today. I will try, I will try to give you the big picture, uh, so you can consider whether to try this technology or uh, you uh, should like for for an uh, idea of yours or uh, to try something else. So yeah, the, today's presentation we will cover a, a couple of topics. Uh, we will see the definition behind .NET MAUI. Uh, we are going to speak about the uh, app architecture, the cro the cross-platform UI features, some uh, specific platform APIs, uh, dependency injection in uh, .NET MAUI, um, and uh, last but not least, uh, we will consider um, the .NET MAUI and Blazor hybrid. Uh, we will uh, cover um, their uh, connection because it's really interesting and it gives us a lot of uh, uh, rich choices, I should say. And in the end, I will show you a um, quick uh, kind of demo how the initial project structure looks like and some of its uh, features. So yeah, let's start. Um, what's .NET MAUI? Uh, by definition, you most probably find uh, this uh, uh, on the internet. It's an open source app platform. Uh, if developed from Microsoft, uh, which uh, provides us the opportunity to build modern, performant, and multi-platform um, apps for uh, iOS, Android, macOS, Windows, with C Sharp and .NET, with uh, the most important thing, a single shared code base. Uh, and, and also uh, with the cross-platform native user interface, which is also an important thing. Uh, the uh, .NET uh, MAUI app architecture, well, um, this .NET MAUI application looks like. Uh, the big important part is uh, this bottom piece. Uh, this is the shared code base. Um, these are the things that uh, you're, that are going to be common at, and shared 100% across all the platforms that we can see in these small circles. Uh, this includes the user interface, uh, which is 100% shared across all. This means it will be the user interface it will be written kind of on C Sharp actually and XAML, the XML based markup using uh, its unique binding features. Um, and if you're familiar with XAML, probably it will be very easy um, the transition between between XAML and .NET MAUI would be very easy for you. Also, um, your resources are shared. Uh, for example, your images, fonts, um, styles, stream translations, uh, they are all shared across the different platforms. Um, native platform features like, for example, uh, the geolocation API, which provides us access to the geolocation sensor on, on the phone is also um, a, almost a single line of code. I will show you an example a little bit later. Um, and finally, the largest amount, the biggest part of the application, uh, that's the business logic. It's, it does not matter uh, what's going to perform and uh, uh, the way that uh, you have written it. But uh, the important thing is that it's again, 100% shared across the uh, uh, different type of the applications. Uh, What's uh, what's unique uh, here is that there is a DC sharp little chunks above the shared code. Uh, um, yeah, about this the, the shared code you can see that since a uh, since .NET MAUI application is built on top of uh, core fundamentals of um, uh, iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows, you can have access to all the native underlying APIs of these platforms using only C Sharp. So that means that you still have access to all iOS bits and pieces, let's say. 
And if Apple can to come out with a new API that will help uh, will help you develop your application, you can still uh, use it uh, only uh, with only using uh, C sharp, and you can take advantage of it, which is really cool, and uh, provides us a lot of opportunities. And um, of course, uh, we can take advantage of the vast ecosystems that uh, this ar architecture brings us, because as you know. Uh, uh, the developers of these platforms uh, continuously upgrade them day by day, and with uh, this uh, opportunity that dot, that .NET MAUI gives us, it's very easy to um, uh, yeah take the advantages of these new developments. Um, this gives us the opportunity to have also a productive environment and uh, maximize our folder use. And also it's very important that uh, it's not so time consuming. And what I mean is that um, if you, uh, back in the days, if you wanted to have like uh, iOS application, you had to know like Swift, Objective-C. Uh, if you wanted to have an Android application, you, want, you, you needed to know, Another language, then uh, we had this uh, native uh, kind of uh, technologies came up, and uh, as you see, they have developed really well. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll continue uh, developing them for sure in the future. Um, and yeah, when we talk about developing uh, uh, .NET MAUI app, yeah, the, the idea choice uh, that I should suggest here will be a um, as you may know, a Visual Studio uh, is an IDE, uh, but you need the, the latest version, which I think was 17.3, the preview version, because uh, that's the only one, the only version with access to the new packages of the .NET MAUI. But we'll talk a little bit later about that in the when we go through go over the project structure. So yeah, uh, to summarize. Uh, this architecture, I want yeah, to, to show you the, the, the benefits here. Uh, we have a productive environment. We have a code reuse. We have a performance, native performance and integrations using one single language, which is great. And of, of course, the expansive ecosystem, because uh, I, I have read here and there, um, yeah, the .NET MAU is still very fresh. It has uh, problems for sure, but uh, with, uh, .NET 8, it will be uh, on a really high level, and uh, for sure the problems will be um, uh, uh, well. We can think of uh, we can think about each uh, platform, uh, what each platform has, and how the piece of technology and .NET MAUI, like for example, renders this UI. Um, yeah, let's think about like uh, uh, the activity indicator on iOS. It's actually called, as we see, UI activity indicator on uh, Android is progress bar. So uh, when we think of, about them. Uh, these are fundamentally different pieces for these two technology for these two platforms. So if you want a um, uh, if you want to have this kind of out call it spinner uh, on your application while to use it while holding some request response, for example, um, you can uh, take advantage of the .NET uh, MAUI idea because what it does. It's like it says, let's struck them. And actually, below them, you can see the activity indicator, which is actually a, a, a API abstracted. Uh, API uh, behind it, we do not care what uh, happens because using it is very um, easy and it will give us, give us the opportunity to like uh, use only one API, but still it will be rendered at the the proper activity indicator on iOS and the progress bar on the Android uh, phones. So that's the main idea here. Here, and um, same thing with the with other controls. Like for example, on the right hand side, you can see the UI spider or the C bar. Um, 
these are again combined, abstracted in a single on API, like called Slider. It, it has a common events, uh, common properties, uh, as then a lot more. And there are a ton of different controls like this. So it's very easy to uh, like uh, use them when you start um, uh, developing a, a cross-platform app using .NET Mali. And there are a lot um, more complicated things like uh, more advanced controls like the carousel view or collection view, uh, which where we, we can like see a ton of, ton of information, uh, but they are also abstracted. I mean, they have uh, done it the way that they have abstracted everything, which is very uh, useful and time saving. Even the small chat boxes and they pick up different like switches. Um, yeah, I have prepared uh, some controls here that I can show you. All of them, all of these controls have uh, have been uh, uh, extract, uh, abstracted. They are really, really common to all the different um, platforms. So they, they have uh, very advanced geometry options, actually, like clipping the different edges, for example. Uh, you can add shadows onto them, and uh, you can add it. Um, it be rendered um, natively to all the different platforms. Uh, and uh, one one that I found more, a little bit more information about, and I want to point to the repo, is the um, graphics view. Actually, uh, you can think of it. Uh, you can think of it as a canvas that enables you to draw a hundred uh, percent uh, your UI, and it will be cross-platform. With all sorts of different geometry, so if you want to go beyond that and you want to be yeah, a completely custom native drone UI, you can do it, uh, and everything is going to look like pixel perfect. Because in fact, there are libraries out there, even though the .NET MAUI is so fresh, that uh, enable you to create a hundred percent pixel perfect uh, application across the different platforms with a single UI, which is great. And now this way, the, the users of those platforms, either iOS, Android, macOS, or whatever, uh, will, will feel familiar with uh, your application, which uh, is uh, very, very uh, nice for you. Because, for example, the iOS and Android users are going to expect those, like, let me show you, those uh, activity indicators and sliders to um, uh, look a uh, Certain way because they're used to their platforms, and uh, it's going to for for them it's going to be easier to um, navigate through your app, use your app at all, and probably they will might like it much more when they feel uh, they they feel it common to their um, style. So that's really fine and really great. And uh, let's let's continue with uh, another another great feature here. Um, we have, uh, yeah, inside of .NET MAUI, there are tons of different page layouts, lay different page layouts, sorry, page types and layout types here. Yeah. Uh, pages, we can see the different types on the right-hand side. Uh, they are the way of um, structuring what is going to be displayed on the screen. So we have a normal content page, we have a flyout, which can be flying out from left to right or right to right, or right to left. We have a, a navigation page. We have a, a tab page, and these tabs can be either on the top or on the bottom. It doesn't matter. We have really good flexibility here. We have also layouts uh, with uh, which we can lay down our controls and information. And these uh, things such as scroll views, uh, content views, different type of frames, uh, stack layouts, absolute layouts, they are all built in .NET MAUI and ready to use. And actually, they are optimized for the different platforms. And here I have a, um, a, an example for you. Uh, on the left side, we can see um, uh, that was a, uh, actually a, br a brand, uh, brand new uh, file new project. That's how it looks like, the, the demo project. 
Here we can see on the left side here uh, all the XAML code, so it, which is our source code for the UI. And the really cool thing is that we have, as we see, a scroll view. Then we have a vertical stack layout with a couple of labels, some text, uh, font size customization, a really actually basic app, but still on the right hand side, we can see that the application is running uh, across uh, four different platforms, uh, uh, Mac OS, iOS, Android, and Windows. And as we can see that it kind of looks really familiar. And actually, uh, however, you, if we look a little bit uh, uh, deeper, at the bottom, which says click me, uh, we can see that uh, on Android is a typical Android button. On iOS is again, typical, typical um, iOS button and yeah, so on, so forth. The idea is here that with uh, a single, with a single uh, button uh, in XAML, we can like uh, have it uh, natively rendered on the uh, UI, which is great. Um, Mm, no, what's also really nice here is that uh, we can add a ton of different things here, which will be uh, take which .NET Mao will take care of. Like as you can see, in the the image uh, which is used as background is uh, one SVG, which uh, is automatically resized uh, for the different platforms and uh, the different resolution that are needed. So we uh, do not do not have to take care of this, which is also great. Um, well, yeah, this is one way of building um, the user interface with the .NET model. There is also ability to build it with a C sharp. They will continue developing it and uh, different C sharp extensions actually, uh, which yeah, makes it even. If you are not a example fan, you can still up for. If you're not some of fun, you can take care and take the advantage of developing developing with the C sharp. Um, yeah, this is what you're looking for and how you would build your user interface for the different platforms uh, using .NET MAUI. And again, a hundred percent share. So yeah, XAML is creating native labels, native buttons, actually native everything you put there <laughs> on the on the source code. Uh, so yeah, on the on the next slide, I prepared uh, a uh, some as I mentioned on the agenda platform uh, specific APIs because yeah, let's talk about a little bit uh, the these APIs and how you actually access them because they are really critical. I mean, uh, why why should you and why will you want to like develop iOS app when you cannot cooperate, for example, with Siri or with the UI kit for iOS. So yeah, what's unique here? Like I said earlier, all of uh, the uh, .NET features are available in .NET MAUI. For example, you can see this gray, uh, gray um, API namespaces like uh, the system.NET, system.io link and et cetera. They are uh, all available ad hoc to you. But uh, the, up, up on the top, these bluish iOS specific APIs, they are also available because you know, normally, I will start from here. Normally, you have to write those things in Swift or Objective C so that you can access these APIs or hope that someone has already developed kind of a, something like an adapter which you can download and use so that you can access them. But what the .NET MAUI provides us is that they have created like something like, I can call them bindings or wrappers around uh, these APIs. And uh, you can actually access them directly using C Sharp, which saves a lot of time and effort. So yeah, that's another great thing. And uh, yeah, this, mean, this means that you can do it in iOS. You can uh, access APIs that are specifically for Mac OS, for Android, of course. And uh, yeah, for, for sure, we will have different specific APIs for the different platforms. I will show you the Android ones for, uh, in a little bit later. But uh, yeah, those all are going to be available uh, to you. So uh, it's uh, it doesn't matter. Actually. You just have to check what you need, and uh, still you can use it using C sharp. Um, 
Yeah. If there is something super specifically that you want to do on the different platforms, you can actually add it additionally by yourself in own binding and break down into the application or in the ecosystem um, at all and uh, give the opportunity to other colleagues, other developers to use it, which is a, uh, which is a great uh, way of uh, developing our own skills, I should say. Um, yeah, let's check. Uh, yeah, the, by, uh, by an, the Android uh, platform, it, the situation is the same, just the names are a little bit different. Um, we have some built-in APIs that uh, are built in the .NET um, available ad hoc. We have some Android-specific ones, but still we can also put them in. Uh, we have also not only uh, platform-specific APIs, but still we have a uh, cross-platform APIs that are all shared. Um, there are a bunch of different uh, yeah, APIs out there and features that uh, kind are kind of the same across the different platforms because, uh, yeah, the, the, for example, the geolocation or the, the battery information uh, API, we expect that it will work on, I think, 99% the same on the different platforms. That's why they are called the cross-platform APIs. And still, they are accessible again uh, using all this. And yeah, things like, as I mentioned, flashlights, geolocation preferences, SMS, gyroscope, etc. Everything will be uh, uh, easily accessed. And yeah, the long story short, here with all these APIs, um, uh, what .NET Mario provides us, it's an abstracted common platform into a uh, platform API, which we can use into a single cross-platform API for our development needs. Uh, so yeah, let me show you one example um, related to the geolocation. So on the first, on the first line here, uh, if you want to like get our geolocation and use it, uh, there is a uh, already developed uh, class. I mean, uh, as I mentioned already, um, wrapped uh, API, which we can uh, call and use in C-sharp. And we, we, we get our last known location with a single line of code. And actually, as you can see, it's already prepared for asynchronous programming, which is also great. Um, and you can just like make a geolocation request and get in the information really easy. Now, uh, what's also unique here is that it uses this, the not that Maui actually uses the same exact uh, application builder model, which is uh, used in uh, ICNF4 to do application startup. So um, we have the opportunity to use, uh, I should say, the same dependency injection style and constructor, constructor injection style that we are already used to. So uh, yeah, let me show you here. Uh, we, we can very easily register the geolocation service using its uh, uh, interface um, in the app startup file and then uh, we can inject the uh, service uh, in our service uh, and use it uh, so yeah pretty much uh, three lines of code and we are already uh, using uh, this uh, api and the main idea here what they why, why they have done it like that is because for sure uh, developing is uh, the first part, like a way, uh, bringing bringing one idea to the to the world, but still we, we need to have testing, and with this kind of uh, dependency uh, injection, we um, can extract our codes. We can uh, into a library, for example. We can easily unit test it. We uh, we can easily create mock for this uh, gil ideal location service uh, and uh, pass it in. If we, for example, do not have a uh, device uh, to use its location, so yeah, pretty much uh, a lot of uh, the things that we are used to developing, even web applications, are already uh, in .NET Mobile, which is uh, very, very useful. Um, and I mentioned web applications, so I should uh, finish the slide here. Well, yeah, here is the sweet part for the web developers. I, I also consider myself. Okay, one, one uh, as a web, yeah, for a web developer. Um, 
personally, yeah, in the past, I uh, wanted to try something different uh, than uh, web development. Uh, I decided like to try to do the mobile app, mobile app or something like a, a game or something. Yeah. And in the beginning, I was searching for a, a technology or a framework. How, how should I do it? There, there are a lot of uh, different um, um, opportunities like we, you, I could uh, do it with uh, Angular React Native or something else, but I was not so into Angular back in the days. So I did not uh, know React. And it was very like pay, painful in the beginning to set up the different uh, um, environments, uh, emulators, for example, an Android emulator to test. And uh, the .NET MAUI, I will show you a little bit later how easy it is to set up an emulator, and it's really cool. Uh, but yeah, when you think about time saving, especially when you're not, like, as I mentioned, uh, into uh, other frameworks, uh, what comes first in my mind when I, I say uh, web development, um, it's, it's Blazor. So it's enabled, Blazor enables us to, have component-based UI system and build 100% uh, working web application using C-sharp. And the cool thing about uh, this here is that we do not need actually so much JavaScript or at all, it depends, And we can, but we can still interact with JavaScript. And yeah, long for short, we have, a, we have laser for the web part, but uh, we have the freshly released .NET model for the, uh, the Windows, iOS, Android, etc. all these platforms. And actually we can combine them, which is the, the main point here. We can combine them and build uh, web apps and cross-platform apps um, using this uh, single shared code base. And it's called like, yeah, that's why it's called Blazor Hybrid. And it enables us to share our Razor components, for example, with uh, as much as we want, in, even in the .NET Mobile application, and it actually, actually, it, this architecture looks like this. It's similar to the Maui architecture, but only with the uh, newly added uh, laser components, the shared laser components. And yeah, this hybrid architecture actually gives us all the advantages of the shared business logic, including the web app. And uh, then we can build the shared laser components and use them in the native app for our, let's say, iOS and Android application. And this is a rich choice, very, very rich choice. And yeah, I really, really liked it when I uh, firstly read about it. And uh, what are some more benefits actually about this um, architecture are like, um, yeah, we can, we can use Blazor to create the full uh, website or progressive web app, doesn't matter. We can use the MAUI to, make fully native cross-platform app with all its features, or we use Blazor Hybrid, which gives us the native app experience with the web view running natively, which is kind of best of both worlds. And uh, yeah, I have summarized some, um, some of the benefits on the slide. Um, yeah, like reusing existing web development skills, which, is, which was important for me because we are all, um, working we do different stuff we have free time and uh, if we decide to just to give it a shot and uh, try to accomplish an idea of ours for sure this uh, time saving uh, will be very very uh, important for us so yeah we can mix uh, native and web ui we can uh, reduce app development time as i mentioned a lot we can ship uh, directly to App Store uh, or Google Play or whatever Microsoft Store, uh, or we can do an internal distribution. And uh, we have access to all the nat native platform capabilities, which is uh, the great thing here. And yeah, pretty much uh, this this is the whole the, the big picture behind the Maui. I have one slide here for which I, I will cover the demo and the questions. If you have some, you can interrupt me, guys. So yeah, first of all, here I before showing anything, I wanted to mention that yeah, I mentioned a little bit uh, earlier that you have to get Visual Studio for Windows. 
it's uh, working perfectly 17.3 the preview version i haven't tested it all, uh, on mac but uh, i suppose i i read some i read here and there that they are uh, rushing to update the version there as well so that uh, developers can uh, take the advantage of uh, developing Maui applications. Um, also a very important thing, uh, I, I came across one problem because when I first tried to start the uh, application, the, the founding project, I was on a Ryzen based uh, PC and um, this the Ryzen architecture, did not cooperate well with the, for example, with the Android emulator because for sure the Android emulator needs a um, some utilization hubs. It actually needs Hyper-V to be enabled into Hyper-V, and uh, it costs a lot of time when you do not have it just to run and test. That's why it, I, would say, I would say for now it's recommended to have in a Hyper-V. Uh, compatible PC so that it will run smooth for you. Um, and uh, one very important thing, uh, yeah, you can develop iOS and Mac OS applications um, on your Windows machine, but still you will need a Apple developer account uh, to uh, like uh, ship your application and build it to, to the App Store because um, yeah, you can uh, even test your, um, you can even test your, uh, code on a, uh, your thing, your own iPhone if you have, but still to connect it, uh, to make it as a test device, you should have uh, first iTunes on your PC, and uh, then you have, you have just to connect it with a cable and uh, verify that uh, with your iPod ID that you have a developer account, and that's it. Your phone becomes a uh, testable, testable device. So yeah, if something occurs, yeah, you can interrupt me, but I wanted to just uh, show you that uh, the project structure, how it looks like, and uh, we can go a little bit over it. So um, yeah, this is the initial project structure when we new, make a new application. Really simple, uh, really, really easy to understand. We have the, um, uh, let's start from here, for example, we have the main program file when we can, as I have, I have shown you, like, um, uh, register different services, uh, we can uh, add different fonts and yeah, et cetera. We have uh, a short shared folder with all, uh, all our shared, um, for example, tools. We have a different resources in this folder like fonts, images, documents, whatever you need. And you can like uh, uh, de develop even more this architecture by your needs. The structure, sorry. Uh, we have a um, we have plat a platform folder which uh, contains specific information for the different uh, um, platforms. Even we can see that we have even support for Tizen, the Samsung OS for the TVs, which is interesting. I will probably try to develop something from my TV to be fun. Um, so yeah, for example, if we open the Android folder, we will have. Uh, one manifest this is an important stuff. Uh, all these folders, the other folders have, have it also. This, uh, let's say, Android manifest has some Android specific things like, um, to, for example, if you want to get an internet access on your emulator, you just have to have this permission. And yeah, you, you, you probably ask yourself, well, how should I know all these uh, permissions? They are so different from the different platforms. I, I went through the uh, .NET MAUI documentation and they are constantly adding a um, different um, articles related to uh, uh, specifically to these specific things for the different platforms. Uh, the permissions uh, on Android is called permissions. I think on Windows is capabilities, uh, but still they are developing really well their documentation so it won't be so uh, hard. Um, what we have also, we have a uh, pages uh, folder where we have different pages for our application. And here we have a data folder. This is the, 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 the basic uh, thing that we get, a one service and a model, which displays some information on our, on our application. And I mentioned 
let me just try to hide this um, thing, which is uh, about, yeah, I'll do it like this. Um, so yeah, uh, I mentioned uh, how easy it is to set up an Android emulator. Actually, it's just two clicks. You have a, a built-in device manager. Um, when you start up your uh, first project, it will tell you that it will tell you that it will, it should download one SDK related to Android. It's a single OK click, and you are done. Then you have this uh, this manager, which will uh, you all the available devices that you have, and uh, you can easily click I want a new device. This uh, window will open. Here you can um, configure it uh, by your wishes. I mean, you can try different resolutions, different different pixel density. Uh, you can try um, uh, whatever you want. Actually, you can uh, install uh, not only Google IPS. You can put Google Play Store on it. You can try different Android versions, uh, different processor processor um, architectures. So, yeah, it gives us a very, it's very flexible actually. And you just click create, wait like a couple of minutes to download all the needed things, and you get something like this. I have like a, some a Google Pixel phone here. And uh, what you need uh, to start is just like uh, come here and uh, start as a normal application. It will take actually a, a, probably up to a minute. To, to start some, oh, sometimes it's a little bit faster, but still. And you have your own Android emulator, and actually it has a very nice feature, a hot reload kind of restart. Well, and it gives you the opportunity when you do different changes on the UI, you have them instantly, and you do not have to like stop the emulator, restart it, wait again, which is very useful. And this actually very, very useful. Um, yeah, let's not waste time and wait to load it because I see it's still downloading some things. Um, it, it, you can actually, yeah, it's saving state every time so that you won't lose your thing. Um, um, one other thing which is uh, really useful is, yeah, and it's a previous version, sometimes has problems. You, we close the emulator, but it's still building. So you, Run and see how your Windows application looks like. You just have to change uh, the the option here, and uh, that's it. It runs a lot, um, a lot faster than the um, emulator, but still, um, it's very easy. Um, let's wait a couple of seconds for it to work. On the other screen. Yep. And then the world, world, world up. So, yeah, we have a couple of pages that are um, developed when we uh, do the project, but uh, yeah, still they are available natively on, on the device. Um, one other interesting thing I mentioned um, is, uh, about the iOS devices. Yep, it, it's very easy to use them. You just come here, like, use the local device option. It, and it will prompt, prompt you to like connect the device. But yeah, I do not have a valid, yeah. Uh, I do not have a valid um, uh, uh, Apple developer account still. So I cannot show it here, but I will subscribe a little bit later. Um, yeah, because for sure I will try to take the advantages of this project now. And, yeah, we have one very good option here as well, iOS remote device. You can set up a remote connection to your, for example, uh, and start using it as a test device, really easy. And you skip the part with uh, developing from uh, the Mac um, separately for, for, for its needs. So, yeah, pretty much that's what I want to show. I hope that. Uh, um, it was interesting for you if something if you have something on your mind guys please share it with me I will be glad to hear it for my presentation one Thank you.
Well, what about Linux? Uh, as far as I know, uh, still nothing. <laughs> uh, there is no official official support um, for uh, this type of uh, platform, but uh, we will see probably the the, the Linux guys who uh, came up will come up with some uh, kind of uh, adapters for, or something to to make us able to. Develop, but I'm not sure if we have a official support for Linux. And uh, the difference between Xamarin and Maui, well, uh, well, not a very, uh, I should say, uh, big topic, but still, uh, I think I haven't developed in Xamarin. Xamarin it was the old way of uh, uh, developing um, uh, applications, native applications to. Uh, the different platforms. Uh, I read here and there that the, the Maui is the, the upgraded, uh, kind of the upgraded Xamarin. And uh, yeah, we will see uh, uh, a little bit later, probably in the year where, when now we have some more updates uh, from the uh, development team, how it will be. Um, we will see how they will develop what they will have. And actually have uh, or uh, they have just promoted something. Yeah, I think you're a few minutes. Okay, maybe someone here questions? Yes, I have one. Uh, please, uh, Karinsho, can you show me what these under dependencies uh, sections? Uh, I'm wondering uh, about <coughs> uh, an architecture of this MAUI. Um, does it depend actually on, on standard, .NET standard, uh, or not? Or it's interesting. And if it does, it, which layers of interaction uh, is possible here? Mm -hmm. Well, it's built on uh, .NET 6 uh, at the moment, as the newest version, <laughs> I should say. Uh, and uh, can you please repeat what you wanted to see from the Android part? Uh, please open uh, the dependencies section on the project. Uh, it's interesting to notice the references, I mean, on the dependencies section. Let me just show you here. Well, I'm not sure. Yeah, there are the different uh, platform versions, mm -hmm. target frameworks of them. Uh, yeah, this actually here in this um, page, we can actually add a uh, uh, different, we can configure the different, uh, uh, like namespaces, uh, uh, different fonts, etc. Also, um, but yeah, as, as far as you see, yeah, it's targeting the, uh, the supported version, which probably the SDK which uh, you download uh, when you create your first project uh, allocate here. Okay, thank you. Looks like uh, it something new uh, reworked from scratch. Yeah, I mean, completely. Yeah. I yeah, I read that it's uh, well. The, some of the Xamarin team developer, the developers that developed Xamarin back in the days, switched to this, but it's still completely new and fresh and from scratch. Yeah. Uh, one more question. Can uh, this SVG uh, is some extension or it's under the hood for Mavi UI? Uh, can you repeat this uh, extension? Uh, yeah, it's under the hood of the Mavi UI or some uh, third party libraries. 
uh, it's under the hood. What you see here is all under the hood. No, for for example, resource splash splash SVG. Oh, uh, yeah, it's it's from the new product again under the hood. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's this kind of built-in like this is the 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 things that you will see when you um, start your application for the first time. I haven't added actually anything here. Any other questions? Okay. I mean, thank you so much for this presentation. It's really good. Thank you so much for your performance. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys for the attendance and questions. <laughs> And dear participants, please, as usual, don't forget to fill in our feedback form because your feedback is important for us. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for attending our events. Uh, we will be waiting for you at our next events. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye. -bye. Bye.